in this video we will learn about the basic techniques of integration and we will apply it to algebraic expressions in order to understand integration let's first revise the concept of differentiation the gradient function is known as dy by dx how do we read it differentiate y with respect to x that is the knowledge of dy by dx what is the technique y is equals to x raised to power of n dy by dx power comes down x remains as it is power reduces by 1 now there are two steps involved over here the first one is power comes down and we know that it comes down and multiplies the second step is the power is reduced by one unit let's focus on this thing again y is x raised to power of n first step is power comes down and multiplies with the variable then the second step that is the power reduces by 1 now let's look at integration so when we talk about the basic technique of integration for an algebraic expression this is the symbol for integration dx means we are differentiating it with respect to x and i'm writing a variable raised to power of n now the process is the opposite of differentiation i can use the term opposite i can use the term inverse i can use the term reverse in some books in some syllabi integration is often called nt differentiation because the process is completely reversed x n the power is increased by 1 we divide by the new power so two steps are involved over here first the power is increased by 1 then instead of multiplication we are dividing by the new power so the process is completely the opposite also the order is opposite let's scroll up and have a look what did we do in differentiation first the power comes down and multiplies then the power is reduced by one unit whereas in integration what is happening we are first increasing the power by one then dividing by the new power don't forget to write a plus c what is c c is known as constant of integration whenever we will integrate we will always write a plus c where c is the constant of integration let's start off with a simple example such as y equals to x cube when we differentiate it dy by dx power comes down x remains as it is power reduces by 1 which simplifies to 3x square in other words if i integrate 3x square with respect to x i should get back x cube so therefore let's take the 3 outside the integration sign and now our focus is on integrating x square so therefore the 3 on the outside remains as it is and now the power of the variable is increased by 1 divide by the new power bracket is closed don't forget to write a constant of integration and let's simplify it this 3 and this 3 cancels off and we are left with x raised to power of 3 plus c 
that means we get the same answer as before. But why is this C appearing? The reason is, if I have y is equals to x cube plus 1, and if I differentiate this expression, what do I get? 3 comes down, x remains as it is, power reduces by 1, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So I end up with the same answer, which is 3x square. Now, the original equation is x cubed plus 1 as compared to this particular equation, which is simply x cubed. What is the difference between the two? The difference between the two is this constant. So, when we integrate 3x square with respect to x, 3 comes on the outside, we are integrating the variable. The answer is the same as before. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, plus a constant of integration. So this simplifies to 3x cubed over 3 plus c, which is simply x cubed plus c. So whenever we integrate, don't forget to write this constant of integration. Later on, when we will have enough info, we will be able to evaluate this constant of integration c. Now let's move on to some more examples regarding basic techniques of integration. If I integrate x power 4 dx, the rule is the same. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power plus a constant of integration c. This simplifies to x raised to power of 5 divided by 5 plus a constant of integration c. Similarly, if I have x raised to power of 1 and I'm integrating it with respect to x, x 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 plus a constant of integration c, which is x square over 2 plus c. Something like x raised to power of 0 and I'm integrating it with respect to x. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power plus a constant of integration. This becomes x raised to power of 1 over 1 plus c. We know that any variable raised to power of 0 is basically a constant, a term independent of x which means that over here basically a 1 was written and when we integrate 1 with respect to x it becomes x plus c. Similarly if I want to integrate 2 with respect to x it will become 2x plus c. Why? Because x raised to power of 0 is written over here this 2 will go on the outside, x raised to power of dx, integrate just like before. This is 0 plus 1 divided by 0 plus 1 plus a constant of integration c, which becomes 2x plus c. Therefore, I can generalize and say whenever we will integrate a constant with respect to x, it will become ax plus c. Now, some more examples something like integral of x plus 1 multiplying with x plus 2 dx the rule is first multiply out the brackets then simplify add up the like terms according to algebra and then finally we will integrate so we cannot start integration right away because there are two brackets over here. First step, open up the brackets. So we have x square plus 2x and this time we will multiply this 1 with each of the terms in the second bracket which will become x plus 2 and the integration sign is still intact. These two like terms will be added. What do we have? x square plus 3x plus 2. Now we will integrate each term with respect to x. Let's first 
write it out. We will integrate x square. We will integrate 3x. We will integrate the constant 2. When we will integrate each term, the rule is the same. x raised to power of n dx, that this x, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, plus a constant of integration. So this term over here, the x square will become x, 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. The 3x dx, basically it's 3 multiplying with x already has a power of 1. So this is 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1. And this 2 becomes 2x plus an overall constant of integration c. So basically there was a constant of integration from here, from here, from here and then we are adding it all up and writing it as a c. So therefore what do we have now? We have x cubed over 3 and this is 3x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. That is the expression that we obtain. Sometimes we have to divide it out. Something like x cubed plus x squared plus a constant 1. The whole expression is divided by x squared and now we want to integrate it. So let's break this up. This is x cubed over x squared. Let's integrate this. x squared over x squared. Integrate this. And 1 over x squared dx. This simplifies to x. This simplifies to 1. This simplifies to, according to rule of indices, x raised to power of negative 2. So we have this term, the second term, the third term, we are integrating it all with respect to x. So the first one becomes x raised to power of 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 because initially there was a power of 1. 1 is basically 1 multiplying with x raised to power of 0. So this is 1 x raised to power of 0 plus 1 divided by 0 plus 1 x raised to power of negative 2, negative 2 is increased by 1, divided by the new power plus an overall constant of integration c. So therefore, after simplification, the first term becomes x square over 2. The second term is simply x. The third term is x raised to power of minus 1, divided by negative 1 plus a c. This is x square over 2 plus x minus 1 over x plus c. This minus 1 is giving us this and x raised to power of negative 1 is written as 1 over x in the denominator. So this is the expression that we obtain after integration. What if we have something like integration of square root of x that is the same thing as x raised to power of half. So now indices is involved x raised to power of half plus 1 divided by half plus 1. x raised to power of 3 over 2 division by 3 over 2. Don't forget the constant of integration c. So the simplification is this 3 over 2 in the denominator becomes flipped and it will be written as 2 third x raised to power of 3 over 2 as it is plus a constant of integration c. Similarly, if we have something like 1 over x cube, that is the same thing as x raised to power of minus 3 dx. The rule is the same, x raised to power of negative 3 plus 1 divided by negative 3 plus 1 plus a constant of integration c. This is x raised to power of negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus c which can be simplified further and written as 1 over negative 2, that's a constant. And this expression can be written as 1 over x square plus a constant of integration c, therefore 1 over negative 2 x square plus c. One more question, something like 1 over cube root of x. That is 1 over x raised to power of 1 third dx. That becomes x raised to power of 1 third with a negative sign dx. Don't integrate unless you have everything in the numerator. 
Now we can start the process of integration from here. This is x raised to power of minus one third plus one divided by negative one third plus one plus a constant of integration c. This is x raised to power of two third divided by two third plus c. This fraction flips and it will be written as three over two x raised to power of two third plus c. One last example. What if we want to integrate one over x dx? This is actually x raised to power of minus one dx. The rule is increase the power by one, divide by the new power plus a constant of integration. But there is a small problem. That is, the denominator becomes zero. The power also becomes zero. But the rule is, if the denominator of a fraction is zero, the whole fraction becomes undefined. So when the whole fraction becomes undefined, we cannot proceed. That means there has to be a separate technique for this kind of problem. So whenever we will do the integration, the rule is it is applicable for all the power except minus one. The rule is pretty simple. Increase the power by one, divide by the new power plus a constant of integration C. That is what we have learned in this video. Hey there, if you like what you saw right now, head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers, videos, revision guides, flashcards, and academic support. All of this is gonna make sure that you're completely set for your A-levels. So I'll see you there on the platform.